So let's talk about what elections are. It is a noun. We also have a verb in English, elect, and we will talk about that in just a minute. But elections are a time when people choose leaders by voting. We will talk a little bit about voting, but that is also a noun. Sorry, voting is also a verb. How about this sentence right here? In elections, we choose our president. Now, we are going to talk about many different ways elections are used, but one of the most famous ways is during a presidential election. Big adjective there. Presidential elections are designed to let the people vote and elect their president. In the United States, we do this once every four years. So in 2020, there was a presidential election. In 2024, there's another presidential election. Here's another sentence using elections as a noun. There are local elections in our town next month. Let's look at how we use elect as a verb, something you do. Elect means choose someone for a political position by voting. And in that picture, it does look like the citizens of some town, some country, some state, they are going to the polls and they are casting their vote. A lot of new verbs probably today, a lot of new nouns. We will talk about all of them as the lesson goes on. But cast, vote, polls, probably new. Don't worry. By the end of the lesson, you will know how to use these. So when we do have elections, we don't just elect a president for the country. Even high schools and other schools in the United States will have elections to vote in or to elect other officials, maybe class president, maybe class treasurer. They deal with money. Is that a hard word to say? Treasurer, treasurer. Here's another picture of people voting it looks like everything is, is spelled mostly correctly here. It does say V-O-T-E. The V is a little strange, but it's okay. We'll accept it. Vote. And those people are casting their vote. There's that verb again, casting their vote. If you saw the English lesson I did on fishing, you will know there's another way we use cast as a verb. I should do a whole English lesson on the word cast because it can be a noun in a couple different ways. It can be a verb when you fish or when you are talking about elections. How about this one? The people elect their mayor every four years. Mayor, that might be a new term for you. Don't worry, we will explain that as well. This might be one of those English lessons you want to rewatch or re-listen to because at the beginning, there are so many new words. I have to use some of these new words to talk about other words. How about this? We will elect a new class representative for the junior class representative. That verb in there is to represent, represent. And that just means you elect somebody who thinks the way you do. So they will make laws the way you want them to. They represent you. Since I can't go to Washington DC and make the laws, we vote for representatives. Those are people that will represent us in our capital, Washington, DC. 
Sometimes they're what you like. Sometimes they're not what you like. And we will talk about political parties in a couple minutes. Okay, let's look at the chat here. A couple things going on. I will go from Warsaw to New York one day. Guess what? I will go from Boston to Warsaw this summer. Yes, I will be in Warsaw for a couple days. All right. Mahmoud, member for six months. Thank you. So thank you. Congratulations on hitting the 27K. I do appreciate that, sir. All right. Olivia says they are casting their vote. Yes, casting. Casting. My goodness. All right. Next week's lesson is all about the word cast. It's going to be an hour long cast. All right. Yeah. Sita says it's good to see so many people. Yeah. Mahmood, Tanya, Freddie, Danny, Ibrahim. Been a long time. All right. Mustafa. There will be in a parliamentary or there will be a parliament election upcoming in Iran and many Iranians aren't going to vote because there is no democracy. Oh, you just wait. We are going to talk about democracy, how it represents the people. But a lot of times when a country says they do have democracy, it's not quite right. And that might be the case. I'm not getting political here. I am going to stay out of it, but that's what Mustafa said. I'd like to think we have a democracy in the United States, but look at this sentence. Great sentence. He was elected as the new president in America. A lot of times I will say the United States, just because it's more specific. America, it could be Canada, Mexico, Brazil, We're all part of the Americas, but when you say the United States, we know which country you're talking about. Now, I am an American because really there's no other way to say what I am. Like Canada, they're Canadians. Mexico, they're Mexicans. In the United States of America, we're Americans. It's a very long uh, name for the country. We'll talk about some other long names for countries. What about this one here? Let's bring this up. We'll get back to the lesson. Mayor. I used that term a little earlier. Mayor. You may be wondering, what is that in English? Well, a mayor is like a president, only for a city though. The president represents the entire country, A mayor represents their city. And you can see right down there, a mayor is a leader of a city. We also have something called governor. Governor sounds almost like government, right? That's where that word comes from. A governor is a leader of a state. And in the United States, we have 50 Five zero, that might be backwards. We have five zero fifty states, and each of those states has a leader that we call governor. So a governor is a leader of a state. Oh my goodness. There is a typo in that, right? Come on, Brent. You're better than that. A governor is a leader of a state. Let's talk about that verb vote. Another picture of people voting. And it looks like they are voting at the polls. Yes, that is a term we will talk about in a minute. But vote is a verb that means to make a choice in an election. Vote is a verb that means to make a choice in an election. I will vote for my favorite candidate. Candidate. 
that is a person who is running for office. That is a person running for office. So many new words. What about this? Polling station or the polls. When you're talking about an election, a polling station or the polls is where people go in order to vote. Polling stations are where citizens vote for their favorite candidates. High school basketball gymnasiums are often turned into polling stations on election day. Here's this. Got a question. We we might not be live on Facebook either. There are 44 people watching. Hello to all 44 people. Nope. It does seem like Facebook. There are a few people in here from Facebook. But I have a question for you. Let me put it up on the screen. There is a certain month where elections normally happen in the United States. And I'm wondering, please, put the month you think elections are more likely to happen in the United States. Which month? is the most popular for elections in the United States. Election day. It's not a national holiday. Most Americans still go to work on election day, but it's always in this month, not always the same day. Please put in the chat. There are already people putting answers, correct answers in the chat. November, 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 correct, November. So yeah, that's not the only month that elections happen. Sometimes you'll have one in the summer or you'll have one after the first election in November. You might have a runoff. A runoff is when two candidates get an equal number of votes or they don't get enough votes to be elected to that position. So they'll have a runoff, which means another election. Sometimes those happen at the end of November. They might happen at the beginning of December. Yeah. All right, Mustafa, I will not answer that question. Who do you think is going to be elected for USA president? Nah, I'm going to try to stay away from that and just present facts. Yeah, as I said in the trailer for this lesson, we are going to talk politics, but I'm going to do my best not to get political. Interesting, I did not know that. Filippo says, in the last election here in Italy, we elected the first female president. Miss, that almost looks like Georgia, but I can't even say that name. Miss Miss Maloney. How about that? Miss Maloney. And okay. So in my opinion, it should be May. Yeah, it's rare that we have elections in in May. And they might be for something called a, a referendum, which we will talk about later. But rarely do we have elections for political positions outside of the month of, of November. So we got some November. Donald Biden, mm, he, he's got a, a good chance, a good chance to become president. Mr. Donald Biden, love it, Freddie, love it. Let's get back to the lesson. This is a polling station. That is where people go to vote. They will go to the polls. How about this? So candidates, as we've already discussed, those are people who are trying to get elected candidates. This is not true. I just wanted to use candidate in a sentence. There are three candidates who are running for president. There's another picture 
of people voting in an election. And you can see that is in a high school basketball gymnasium. The school that I taught at last year was used as a polling station. So we would still go to school, but PE classes or gym classes had to be outside or they had to meet in a classroom. They could not use the gymnasium that day because the gymnasium was being used for voting. It was a polling station. How about this for candidate? She is a candidate for city mayor. How about this word? Again, pay no attention to the spelling. The spelling down there is correct. I can't promise the spelling in the picture is correct. A ballot. A ballot is a piece of paper used for voting. So 20 years ago, there were only paper ballots. Now, some states and each state handles their elections a little differently, but sometimes you will not vote on paper. You might have an electronic ballot. In my state, the state of Maine, the last time I voted, I voted on paper with a really thick black marker. You might use this verb when you're talking about ballot. I marked my ballot and put it in the box. There is something called a ballot box, which we will talk about towards the end of the lesson. But you can imagine a ballot box is probably where you cast your vote with the ballot. You put it inside the box. The ballot lists all the candidates. I think I have two examples for ballots. If you don't look too closely at that, that does look like a real ballot. But if you look closer, you can see like there are no names on that ballot that are spelled correctly. Yeah. And on that ballot, ballot isn't even spelled correctly. That is how ballot is spelled. The ballot lists all the candidates. What about this next word? Campaign. Campaign. I have a picture of a politician campaigning. So campaigning is the verb. A campaign is the noun. And a campaign is the process of trying to win an election. Right now, most of the candidates who want to be elected president, they are campaigning right now. Our sitting president, President Biden, is not really campaigning. He is mostly staying in the White House, hopefully doing the business that the country needs. But the other candidates are going around to different cities in the United States telling everybody why they should be president. And that is what politicians do when they campaign. How about this? The candidates are busy with their campaigns. They are going from state to state to campaign. So in those two sentences, candidate is the noun and campaign is also a noun in that first sentence. But in the second sentence, it becomes a verb. He went to different cities for his campaign. Right now, there's something called the primaries. Okay, The primaries are happening in different states. The first state to have a primary is New Hampshire. And that is when... We haven't talked about political parties yet. Um, but a primary is when people vote for candidates before the general election. I hope that is not too confusing. 
in a primary, you might have 12 candidates. One of those candidates will be picked to run in the general election. Now, I don't want to predict too much about the general election for president, but there is a very good chance after the primaries that we will have in the general election Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. That is probably going to be the general election. We'll talk more about that when we get to political parties, which, which is very close. This has already been mentioned, but a democracy, which I think most people want to live in because it means you have a voice in your government. You are able to vote for candidates who will represent you, either at the city level for mayor, at the state level for governor, or at the federal level as president. When you hear federal, think of the entire country. Federal government deals with the entire country. State government deals with just the states. So a democracy is a system of government where people vote for their leaders. They don't have a king. They don't have a queen. They don't have a dictator. Somebody who never leaves office and just stays there. So it would be nice if everybody lived in a democracy, I think. There are a few countries in English that have democratic in their official names. Democratic is the adjective. Democracy is the noun. So if you live in a democratic country, the name says you vote for the people you want to represent you. And here are just a couple. I asked AI to draw some maps and some flags. They came really close. They came really close. But this first one is the DRC. This is located in Central Africa. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, or the DRC, is located on the continent of Africa. Another typo there. We're missing is. Maybe I'll fix it here. Make it perfect. I think that's perfect. Democratic Republic of the Congo, the DRC, is located on the continent of Africa. Notice that preposition there. I didn't say in the continent of Africa. I said on. So I don't know, hopefully in the Congo, they still elect their officials to represent them. All right, I need to take a drink of water before we talk about this one. I said I wasn't going to get political, but maybe maybe just this once, okay? If this lesson is helping your English improve, don't forget to tap that like button and share it with a friend who's learning English. All right, so North Korea. When I think of North Korea, I don't think democracy. I don't think of a country where people will go to the polls and elect their president. But in the official English name of North Korea, it is the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. North Korea. Again, I don't want to get too political, but it doesn't seem like North Korea like really has a democracy. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. I'm sorry. I don't know if I can say your name correctly, but they say the city roads were blocked because of a campaign. That does happen sometimes, right? Here in the United States, it happens. Just... Um, there's a, a, a police organization, I guess, called the Secret Service. And the Secret Service protects the president. And a lot of times when 
the president will come through a town, the roads will be blocked for the president's safety. Hmm. Gosh. Brent, why don't you be the candidate? I don't know, man. I don't think I want to run for any political office. It's hard. Oh, thank you, Tanya, though. She said she would vote for me. Okay, I appreciate that. Hey, look who showed up. Harry, this was his idea. He came up with this last live stream, and I thought, ooh, elections. It's in the news quite a bit. Our presidential election isn't until November, but you're already starting to hear it. So I'm hoping after this lesson, if you watch the news about the United States and it's in English, some of the words they use, you will now understand. Voting, ballot, primary. Thank you, Tanya. Thanks for voting for me. Just check in the chat to see if there are any questions. If you are watching on Facebook um, and you have a question, come over to YouTube, American English with Brent, because it's easier to see the the questions. Some I don't know if anybody is watching on Facebook, though. What is this? Ralph says, the campaigns of the presidential candidates in the US a, seem very strange to me from a European perspective. Sometimes they are more like rock star shows than a politician, than that of a politician. Yeah, it, it does get a little crazy. Social media, flags of the political candidate, not the US, but a, a big flag that says Trump. Yeah, so Thomas, that is true. Um, I am not an expert on the English government. I know their government is a, a parliamentary system, so it's a little bit different. But yeah, still have a king. I think that royal family costs the citizens of England a lot of money each year, or so I have heard. But um, yeah, don't know so much about uh, the British way of doing things. I see a lot of votes in here. My goodness. Thank you. Dunsnay, hope you're doing well. Hope everything is going well in Cuba. Uh, Mustafa, this is his opinion. Are you, are you trying to get me canceled? Whew. I put up, I put up the, oh my God. I put up the comment, but this is Mustafa's comment, not mine. North Korea, Iran, China, and Russia have a dictator. Feel free to comment if you want. I am on board with North Korea, though. I don't think there's any other way to say that man is a dictator, right? I used, I just used a phrasal verb. I wanted to... Oh, on board. On board. Not a phrasal verb. But uh, yeah, if you are on board with something, that means you agree with it. On board. So with the North Korea thing, I think... Pretty easy to say that man is a dictator. What's his name? Kim Il Sung? I don't I don't remember. I know there are three though. Well, yeah, there are three. Right? There's still their spirit is still in North Korea. Let's move on from North I don't I don't want to make anybody mad. I'm just an English teacher. What do I know? But let's talk about another do I, oh, I only have two. No, there we go. Those pictures are out of order. I'll have to come back to that one. But another democratic republic, at least in name, is the country of Laos. So Lao People's Democratic Republic is located in Southeast Asia. All right. Looks like I have another typo there too. Is located. Yeah. And from what I've read, you know, I don't know. Maybe not free elections in, in Laos, but I don't live there. I can't speak for them. If you are watching from Laos, let us know, either live or on the replay. Yeah. I, don't, I would love to visit Laos, Laos one day. And right here, Algeria. A pretty good job with the flag. 
the, the map might be a little bit off, but another country is Algeria and its official name, it has democratic, meaning the people will vote for their officials. People's Democratic Republic of Algeria is located in Northern Africa. Yeah, so I just forgot is on all of those for some reason. Is. Boom. All right, in a democracy, voting is very important. Maybe one of the most important things. In a democracy, the citizens, the people, get to vote for who they want to represent them. We live in a democracy, so we choose our leaders. I'm not even talking, that's just a sentence. I'm not even talking about the US. I'm just saying, if you live in a democracy, you can say this. We live in a democracy, so we choose our leaders. I don't think this is political at all. I don't think this is political at all. Polling station. It's what it's called. That's the place you go to vote. The polling station or the polls are the places where people go to vote. But we never use the singular in this case. So you can say the polling station, but we never say the poll. It's always the polls. So let's talk about that in a sentence. Many people were waiting at the polls in order to cast their vote. Many people were waiting at the polls in order to cast their vote. What I should do right now is a huge thank you to all of the channel members. I am going to turn on members only chat. So you are able to chat as a member. If you would like to become a member, it does cost a few dollars a month, sometimes as little as a dollar. But for that dollar, you can get bonus English lessons. You can get your name in green on the screen right now. And at least once a month, we do have members only chats before the stream begins. And what I would like to do, can I do this? I think I can. What I would like to do is share, just, just scroll down through all of the members, give them a shout out. It really does. Becoming a member does help the channel each month. I'm going to be doing some traveling in 2024, visiting Brazil, Iceland, Poland, Turkey. And with the money I get from memberships, I use that towards travel new equipment to hopefully make the English lessons sound better. But let me do this. Pull this up. I think I can. We're live, but I think I can pull this up. And we are just going to scroll through as a thank you for the channel members. What I'm doing now is scrolling. We call this scrolling on a web page. But thank you to all of the channel members. And uh, sometimes you will see like towards the end, people that have been channel members for a really long time. Nori right there, she was the first, the very first channel member. And maybe you see your name here, but thank you so much to all of the channel members. I'm actually going to be meeting Luke in Poland a little later on this year. Adi the tie, there he is. Thank you. There's Tanya. There's Audi the tie again. Thank you. Maria, Danny, a lot of Cecilia was one of the first subscribers too. Amina, thank you so much. There's Sita. Yawen. Harry. Look at that. There he is. Chef Ket. I will be meeting Chef Ket as well this year in Turkey. So, and as you can see, Bob the Canadian, 41 months. Miho, 43 months. Never took a month off. That is crazy. Even to, I'm a member of, of Bob's channel as well. And I haven't been a member the whole time because my credit card ran out and I had to renew my membership. But 
Let's just check the chat here before we get into really Indonesia. Is is that a joke? Is it is it a democracy, Indonesia? All right, maybe we should do that, right? Police organizations. What would be the uh, have to workshop that a little bit. If you workshop something, you you play around with the the words. Sorry, taking a sip of water here. Um, let's see, Harry. I was wondering if the phrase to abstain from voting sounds natural. Yes. Yeah, you could use that. Yeah, to abstain from something means you don't participate in it. And what I mean, it's a family channel, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But uh, you might hear the term abstinence. It comes from abstaining meaning not participating. But if you ever hear abstinence, that means a person does not have sex, I guess, abstinence. But yeah, you could abstain from voting, which means you're you're going to sit this one out to use an English phrasal verb. You are not going to participate. Whoa, is that a democracy? In Belgium, if you don't vote, you will get a fine because voting is compulsory. Another way to say mandatory. I did not know that. Jeez. In the United States, we can abstain from voting. And in fact, a lot of eligible voters will abstain. So I don't know all of the rules of voting in the United States, but I do know you have to be 18 You have to be a citizen of the United States and you also can't be a felon. A felon is someone who has committed a felony and a felony is a really bad crime. Tanya. Oh, I look third. I look thirsty. Thank you. I did take, I was thirsty. I did take a sip of water on camera, but because of this super chat, I'm going to take another sip. I just need to find the thing I play. Super chat. Tanya, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. I took a sip of water and you didn't see it. Thank you, Tanya, for the super chat. Anything? Oh, Lucevin, another super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat. I have a little something for you as well. I can find it. It's right here. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, Lucevin, thank you so much. Should we turn off members only? I will go through to see if there are any questions, but everybody can come in. Let's go. Everybody can come in. Even the trolls. Let's do it. Comments here. All right, Manuel. Thank you for being a channel member. Or, or maybe, okay, maybe, I think that says maybe. Okay, maybe a lesson about criminal vocabulary. I like that. I do think a couple years ago, I did one about trials, I think. But I haven't done one on criminal police. That could be a good one. I got I got a paper and and pencil right here. Maybe we'll combine Tanya's and Manuel's. Okay. Police legal something. How about that? That'll be a good enough note. I will remember that. What? Your name wasn't there. I think it was. It must have been there because you are clearly a member here. Member for two years and three months. Thank you so much, Manuel. That means a lot. Freddie Wolf. Thank thank you for president, right? But uh, the president is such a busy job. If I did get elected president, I don't think I would have time to teach English lessons. So... That is the only reason I will not run for president. That's the only reason. But Freddie Wolf, thank you so much. I have a little something for you. 
can never find it. Here it is. Here it is. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, Freddie, I appreciate that. Pour a little more water into my, my cup here. And then we can continue with the rest of the lesson. Yep. Thank you to the 63 people who are watching right now. What was the last thing we talked about? Polls, was it? Polling station, maybe? How about this? The polls close tonight at 8 o'clock. That is a very common time for the polls to close, 8 o'clock. They usually open at 7 a.m. and they close at 7 p.m. Like I said earlier, election day, which happens in November, is not a national holiday. So a lot of Americans do work on election day, but the polls are open for, what, 13 hours? It could be 14 in some places. And it just allows as many people to vote as possible. So the polls close tonight at 8 o'clock. Many people were waiting at the polls in order to cast their vote. All right. This could be a little confusing, this one. We're going to talk about parties, but it has nothing to do with birthdays or graduations. These are political parties. And in the United States, we have two major political parties that we'll talk about in just a second. But a party, when it comes to politics, is a group of people with similar political ideas. So if you belong to a political party, like the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, when you join there, that means you think a lot like the other people in the party. So here's a sentence about political parties. In the United States, we have two major political parties, Republican and Democrat. And we'll talk about what each of those parties believes in, their major beliefs. It gets a little more complicated than what we'll talk about, but I think you'll get a good idea. But if Americans do not belong to either major political party, they might be called independent. So in the general presidential election, there will be a Democrat, probably Joe Biden, and there will be a Republican, probably Donald Trump. Most years, there isn't anybody else. One Republican, one Democrat. Every so often, a popular politician that doesn't belong to either party will will make the the ballot but it's rare if you ever hear third party candidate that means that person is an independent we have a couple other political parties like the green party but if you hear third party they're probably an independent they're probably not a democratic or Republican candidate. This is a little advanced, isn't it? I hope it's not too bad. So in that picture, we have an elephant and a donkey. So oh, this was a picture for someone who is independent. Yeah, I'll make that a little bigger. You can see on one side of him, there are some elephants. And on the other side, there is a donkey. So right in the middle, that is someone who is independent. But let's talk about, if you're a Democrat, what are some of the things that you will believe? And here, we do have that donkey again. And some of the things that Democrats believe in are listed below. A few things that many Democrats believe are big government. Collecting more taxes gun control, LGBTQ plus rights. Just a couple of those things they believe, 
but that really helps people understand what the Democratic Party is all about. Big government, not a big military. We'll talk about that in a minute. But a big government, people paying a lot of taxes so it can go to help other people who don't have as much. We might say people in need. And Democrats do not believe in having lots of guns. I'll keep it like that. So if a Democrat is thinking about gun guns, they probably think the fewer guns out there, the better. And that's a big difference with the Republicans or the GOP. I think my elephant was back here a little bit. Yeah, for some reason it was, I put it out of order. But in this picture, you can see a giant elephant standing in front of a few pillars, those or columns on the side. We might call it a pillar or a column. The elephant, that is what represents the Republican Party. So uh, there are a lot, I am sorry. There are a lot of typos in this live English lesson. Let's fix that one. A few things that many Republicans believe in are smaller government, gun rights. They're usually pro-life and they believe in a big military. So let's go over some of those terms. Smaller government, that means they don't want as many people working for the government. They feel that if a citizen works hard, they should be able to keep most of their money. They don't believe in large taxes. They do believe that people can own guns, maybe lots and lots of guns for some Republicans. And when I say pro-life, this is definitely something I don't want to talk too much about because it is controversial. If something is controversial, that means many people disagree about it. But when we talk about abortion in English, that means a baby who is not born yet, an operation happens so that baby is never born. So Democrats, you might hear they believe in a woman's right to choose. Republicans are likely to say abortion should be illegal. Oh boy, getting political here. Hopefully I did not put my opinion in there anywhere. Just trying to present facts. You might hear the Republican party out of order. You might hear the Republican party called the grand old party or the GOP. AI, they had some trouble making that G. As many times as I tried, it just wasn't great. But the Republican Party is sometimes called the grand old party or the GOP for short. Now, when you hear grand old party, you might think, oh, the Republicans came before the Democrats. No. The Democratic Party is older than the Republican Party. Yeah. Let's just check the chat for any questions. Yeah. Turkey as well. Mega. Hope you're doing well. All right. Technology. It's a good one. All right, Monik. Could you... In the pickle, take the nickel. Amonic, I'm sorry, I don't. I've never heard that term, and I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's related to politics either. But I've never heard that. In the pickle, take the nickel. I don't know. If you're in a pickle, that means you are in a very uncomfortable position, not physically, not in a in an uncomfortable chair. But if you're in a pickle. You have a big decision to make, and it, it might be a bad decision if you make the wrong one. All right, Abdi, he definitely wants to get me canceled on YouTube. Um, rigged, 
rigged elections. I think I need to be careful what I say here, but anytime something is rigged, that means it was not done fairly. Okay. So people have gotten in trouble for saying that the U S elections are rigged, but like in the last election, a lot of Republicans would have said, or some Republicans would say the election was rigged. All right. So manual says, yeah, for people who can vote, who are eligible to vote only 45% do. Is that true? 45% of eligible voters actually vote. Doesn't surprise me. Ooh, an English lesson from the white house. That would be amazing. All right. Well, thank you, Freddie. Thank you, Freddie question. Uh, okay. Maybe I missed the information. Yeah, I did say earlier, the legal voting age is 18. You can vote at 18. But to drink alcohol, or to smoke tobacco, you have to be 21. Constantine, good to see you here. Ah, Yulia's here. Privet. Privet. It's a good way to say hello in Russian. All right, why the elephant and the donkey? What's the meaning of both? Yeah, I, I looked this up and I wasn't really going to, hey, Amina, good to see you. I wasn't going to talk about it because it, it just doesn't make too much sense. And it really goes back more than 100 years, the elephant and the donkey. But um, the donkey, we had a president named Andrew Jackson, and he was stubborn he wouldn't do what people wanted him to do. He was stubborn and donkeys are stubborn. So at that point, somehow there were some newspaper articles written and the democratic party is now known, um, to have the donkey as their mascot. So it dates, it dates way back even before the Republicans. So the Republicans, the first Republican president was, Abraham Lincoln in 1860. And the best I could find is that a newspaper article was written and it described the Republicans as being this big, intimidating beast. So, um, I hope that helps, but I don't, it, it started a long time ago. And, um, from all the research I did, it didn't look like there was one time where like, okay, this is our mascot. It happened over a number of years. Hope that helps. Um, all right. Some people are saying what, what party they're part of. Okay. Thank you. The beanies teacher. Appreciate it. Strong. I like it. Yeah. The beanie strong Filippo. Oh, last time you were mentioned earlier. I mentioned I showed a picture of all of the channel members. I do have a little something for you, Filippo. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, Filippo, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Let's see, I've been to the White House. It's pretty good. Walter, welcome. Thank you. I heard that phrase in a series called Bosch. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Bo okay. I'm not familiar with that show. Okay. It's a show Bosch. Somebody's last name probably. All right. I do see, uh, do see some people saying their political opinions in the chat. That is great. Love it. I'm just not going to do it. All right. What else do we have here? Couple more. Majority. So usually a political candidate needs to win with a majority of the vote. This can be different from place to place. But when you hear majority in English, that means more than 50%. Might be 51%. It might be 50 
0.5%, but it has to be more than 50% to be a majority. I asked AI, please draw me a pie chart, which that thing is. But if you look at the math, there's no way that can happen. You have 51%, 49%, but then some other pie slices that looks like it represents something kind of big. Like, yeah, so they didn't get it quite correct, but how about this sentence? She won the election with a majority of the vote. Yeah, I don't want to go into all of the different ways people can win an election. It's different from state to state. We haven't talked about the electoral college today. Maybe I can do another live stream about elections or politics. But sometimes candidates need to get more than the majority. All right. We do have a couple more terms to go over. And maybe I will record those later and put it out as a separate video. But I do have somewhere I need to go. And we have been doing this for an hour. We covered a lot of topics, which is why I say you might want to rewatch this because there are a lot of new topics. Just checking the chat. Yeah, pie chart, we would call that a pie chart. All right, Etienne, I think a lot of people feel that way. It's a great way to use that aligned, that, that verb aligned. I don't fully align with either. So based on that statement, I would say, oh, Etienne is probably an independent. Maybe he believes in, in some things that the Republicans believe in and, and some things the Democrats believe in. So he's kind of in the middle. And that might be true for a lot of people. Okay. Ooh, how is it considered the best president? Uh, Walter, I'm not sure what you mean there. Like, who has been our best president ever? Or, um, so in modern day, to pick our president, we go to the polls on November. It's always the first Tuesday in November. So people will cast their vote to find the best president. I hope that's, I hope that's correct. Walter, thank you so much. That is a very big super chat. Got a little something for you. Thank you so much, Walter. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Very nice. Thank you so much. Yeah, Walter, you just... Oh, okay. So ever, the best president ever by opinion. Okay, so there are usually like three that are mentioned when you're talking about best president ever. But again, that is a, an opinion. So other people will have different thoughts. But a lot of people have in their top three of US presidents, not in order, but it would be like maybe George Washington. He's mentioned quite often as the best president. He was our first president. Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president. President during the Civil War. President during um, emancipation, which is when slavery ended in the United States. And a lot of people will say Franklin Roosevelt, who served during the Great Depression in the United States and also most of World War II. So those three, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and uh, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. All right, but Hilton says his is Barack Obama. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so if we're going over some, um, some police lingo, you might hear that, hey, watch my six. And that comes from a clock where 12 o'clock would be in front of you 
three o'clock and nine o'clock would be on either side and your six is the back of you. Yeah, nicely done. Oh, I don't know if I like the way that sounds. President Watson. Now, Mr. Watson, as, as a teacher, probably better, right? Manual 51, 49. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. It's the majority. Sometimes you have to win by more than a majority, but yeah. All right. I think that will do it. I need to get going, but Walter, I would love to thank you for that. That is amazing. I hope I answered your question about the best president ever. Filippo, thank you so much. Freddie, thank you so much. Lucefin, thank you. Tanya, thank you. Harry, thank you. Mahmoud, thank you. Lots of people to thank. Etienne, thank you. Filippo, thank you again. And Yeldison. Yeltsin. I will work on that. Thank you for becoming a member. Any last second questions? Looks like no. Mega, see ya. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, Walter, I answered your question. Perfect. I hope you all have a good week. This, in the middle of the week, we will have an English lesson on food. I take a road trip and I talk about food. And I do mention a couple people who submitted answers on what is their favorite food that starts with G. It's going to be all G foods. And either next week or the week after, I will be back with another English lesson. I'll put up a poll. What do you want? IELTS words that begin with C, natural disasters, man-made disasters, or police and legal terminology in English. I will work on that title, but something like that. Yulia, thank you. Ralph, thank you. Olivia, thank you. Walter, again, thank you. Adios amigos. I must go.